Hi everyone, welcome to my blog. I'll be discussing case studies with a focus on case studies that examine organizational change. Here's what I'll be discussing in the next 10 to 12 minutes. First, I'll provide a definition of what's a case study. I'll then look at the benefits and disadvantages of using this research method. Then, we'll turn theory into practice and we'll examine three case studies and see how each researcher used a case study to examine an issue. Also, we'll look at the strengths and weaknesses of each case study. Finally, we'll look at the discussion questions for the week. Here's a definition from Cresswell in our textbook defining a case study. Quote, case studies are a qualitative design in which the researcher explores in depth a program activity process of one or more individuals. The case cases are bounded by time and activity, and researchers collect detailed information using a variety of data collection procedures over a sustained period of time. What does this definition mean? Well, it means case studies are very flexible. Researchers can use a case study to examine a single or multiple cases or an event that's happened in the past. The case study can be a short or long-term examination of a question or issue, but the researcher isn't immersed in a group setting like you would see in a participant-observer research method. Data is collected through interviews, structured observations of events, and interactions between people. Also, content analysis is used when researchers examine documents. Researchers focus on meanings in language or images with the goal of finding similar events between different groups of people. Like any research method, the goal of a case study is to answer research questions. First, case studies can lead to what Zickelkall calls motivation. Basically, A leads to B. This means you have a question, your research answers it, which develops new insights. The other benefits are inspiration and illustration. These benefits are similar and they feed off one another. Case studies help identify gaps in research, and then the researcher uses his or her case study to fill these gaps. By furthering research knowledge, case studies help develop a conceptual contribution to research. In my opinion, I also believe public relations practitioners can use case studies as a general guide to help solve their problems while working in the public relations field. However, with any research method, there are disadvantages. As I mentioned, case studies are a qualitative research method. This means the evidence gathered may not be convincing. For example, while quantitative researchers test an hypothesis using tests of significance, there aren't any tests of significance for qualitative research. Hence, there's a lot of subjective interpretation to research findings. There's also a danger that a case study can become only a descriptive study. For example, the researcher describes the problem, the theory, and the situation, but doesn't explore individual meanings. This is problematic because a descriptive study doesn't fill in the research gaps. Bias can also be a disadvantage when using a case study for research. The samples chosen for interviews and focus groups could be biased. Unlike quantitative research, where simple random sampling is used to develop a representative sample, in qualitative research, samples are taken without using chance. This creates a biased sample. Finally, in my opinion, as I mentioned in the previous slide, case studies can help public relations practitioners at work, but we have to be careful when applying case studies to our own situation, because case studies aren't exactly the same. The conclusions drawn from the case study may not apply to our own situation. Since we now have an understanding of a case study, as well as its benefits and disadvantages, let's turn our attention to three case studies. The first case study we'll examine is from Kent Spreckelmeyer, where he analyzes office relocation and environmental change. Spreckelmeyer identified that change occurs in the workplace either within the organization or within the organization's workstations. Spreckelmeyer highlighted studies that showed changes to the office environment affected workplace productivity. However, he saw a gap in the research. How can office designers decrease worker stress during a change in office location or a change in workstations. The case study began in February 1990. It was based on a management decision to change working conditions in the office and move the office location in order to improve efficiency and productivity. Changes were made to the plant configuration, office layout, lighting, partition, and aesthetics. 
The study used a post-occupancy evaluation to measure the effects of environmental change in a single case. The evaluation measured effectiveness of standardized furniture, partition systems, and customized lighting. The evaluation also looked at how management designed work environments. Spreckelmeyer found there was an overall increase in satisfaction concerning the move to the new facility in every category but one. Then, Spreckelmeyer went one step further and compared pre- and post-move data against the National Survey of Office Workers. The goal was to show how specific building conditions contributed to the overall satisfaction with workspaces before and after a move, and whether the post-occupancy evaluation findings were similar or different when compared to other workers. The comparison found that small scale changes, such as workstation lighting, size of workstations, and office privacy contributed to worker satisfaction in the workplace. Our second case study deals with communication. Carmel O'Sullivan and Helen Partridge used a single case study to examine organizational change. They argued that for a change to be successful, those associated with the change must accept that change is necessary. O'Sullivan and Partridge argued that strategic communication is essential to ensure organizational change is successful. The researchers used a case study to examine change at the University of Southern Queensland Library in Australia. The university was undergoing change and that included the library. The study examined how library staff and students viewed the library's future, trends in library services, as well as the exploration of alternative futures. Developing strategic plans to adapt and implement change were also explored in the study. O'Sullivan and Partridge surveyed staff and students conducted focus groups, and they also held workshops to collect data. While organizational change was still ongoing, the early results were encouraging, as library staff and students were embracing change and understood the need for change. Feedback about the change was positive, and the methods used to articulate change were also viewed positively. Our final case study examined the impact of everyday experiences on planned organizational change. Kimberly Best conducted a comparative study on two community-based organizations in a mid-sized American city. She wanted to examine cognition and sense-making because there weren't many studies that focused on schema change. Best used focus groups, targeted interviews, and participant observation of employees in these two organizations to determine how staff coped with change. Best concluded there were two types of schemas depending on how people felt about the change. In one organization, employees supported change and they developed a romantic view of the change. In contrast, members of the second organization were against the change and they developed a tragic narrative about it. Depending on the narrative, those who romanticized about the change supported change initiatives, while those who developed a tragic narrative impeded the change. We've looked at three case studies that use different approaches to study a gap in the research. The researchers also used different methods to collect data. Spreckelmeyer used one study but then compared the findings to a national survey. O'Sullivan and Partridge used one case study while Best used a case study to compare two organizations. In my opinion, the three research articles had a strong literature review that summed up why they were studying the issue, including gaps in research. The conclusions based on the research were also strong. However, Bess was the only researcher to discuss study limitations, and she went one step further and protected the staff members and organization's privacy by giving employees and the organization's anonymity. In contrast, Spreckelmeyer and O'Sullivan, as well as Partridge, could have discussed limitations in their respective studies. I also wonder if Spreckelmeyer's additional comparison to general office workers made the research too complex. I think the researcher was trying to ensure the case study could be applied universally. Overall, I felt all three articles filled in the research gaps regarding organizational change. Now I'd like to turn our attention to this week's discussion. This week we'll be focusing on Spreckelmeyer's article. Here are the questions on the screen. I won't go into them in detail as they'll be posted in our class website. Finally, Here's a quick look at the references that I used, and I hope that everyone enjoyed this presentation and found it informative. Thank you for viewing, and I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion this week.